out of the week makes that matchup a little bit more difficult um, than I think Miru was bargaining for. Yeah, and as well as that, yes, the Unleash Power is a good ultimate to kind of steal away, but Rift. if was... you're going to go out, go out in a blaze of glory. And now Levi, he might be in a bit of trouble here. He gets CC down, and he's going to have to use a little bit of a dash. They got the damage. The night ticking, not quite able to get him. I mean, maybe get that flash out of him. So, yeah, it's going to go straight in. Going to look to try and maybe land a... Chains, knock-up is good. They're getting the damage down. There's a good red buff there as well. Flash forward, another flash. The red buff is ticking. And Miryu does pick up that kill. Will level up to keep him safe and healthy. And that could be huge against Levi, who's trying to turn this one around. The knock-up no is flash. decent. No flash. Looking to try and decoy it out, but he just can't. And the everybody level. gets a level up to keep them alive. R7, two to nothing. Oh, there's four. Pallet now in the mid lane, though, trying to see what he can pick up here. Maybe go for a bit of a quickness here. The Unleashed Power is good, and he doesn't even need his support. Just, just continues to be able to put the hurt down and get the damage there. Really good stuff from Gam. And again, we were kind of saying, hey, look, R7, great start. You're getting the two kills in mid. You're getting control over bot side, but it's now starting to fall apart. Oh, there's Levi as well on the top side. Kong going to try his absolute best, but he knows he's dead to right. Still is top. No. We're going to try and take mid terror instead, which honestly could work out pretty well, but Levi now here. Oh, Levi does pop down the Cyclone to make sure he's able to try and get away from this one here. They're tanking this turret very much way too long, and it's just all kind of falling apart right now. They're going to lose two. They may even lose more as Kiaia TP down on top of that ward. Not quite able to get much else. He does go all out. Bomb trying to see if he can just maybe snip him down. Gets knocked back for his efforts. Flashes away. The Ignite. Oh, excuse me. The Smite. And now the Ignite. The Magnet Storm comes in. They're going to try and take down the Kiaia. They finally do. But that wave is huge. And Sao and Lions, they have to leave. The Temple advantage. That becomes hard to do when it's not oh, for the back. They're coming in from all sides. But maybe we're not the ones getting collapsed upon. Maybe you are. There's the Cataclysm coming down. They haven't killed off the turret just yet. Now they have a flash away by Audi. You can see Miru finally coming in, steals away the quickness, trying to jump in here on top of the tanks. You got Levi going down first. There's a good needlework here. Good scatter the weak, though. Gings them all right back into the hands of the Zaya. And now they can turn into this fight. R7 thought they had an opportunity, but Gam say no as they take themselves a three for one. Kati here as well. This Syndra performance has been wonderful. Kati going to jump in straight and try and find Miru, but misses the scatter of the weak. That's pretty big, and he's going to get a fair bit of damage struck on top of him. The Kaiser goes straight in onto the backside. They're trying to burn down this Syndra, and they will. Cataclysm goes down onto Slater, who has to let the feathers fly. Tries to get away from this entire three-man unit, and it's all a little bit separated. This is good for R7. They're not letting them fight in a 5v5. Now Bomb flashes back over. Pallet tries to go in, but Slater takes down the Gwen. Now in a 4v4, you got double Superman, or sorry, double uh, pink wards in there to stop Levi from getting caught out. Audi does have a flag and drag should he need it. They go forward. They're going to try and burst down the Cassante, and they will. 3v4. Crash down comes in. Levi jumps back over the wall. It's all the movement you could possibly want. Slater has seen so many low health bars. The last one. There is a ward, though, in the back of the pit that's going to spot this one out, but I think it might be a little bit too late. Audi finally here. Does get scattered Palace. the weak, though. Palette trying to see if he can look for a bit of a flank. They're turning and burning onto the Cassante, and now they're going to try and burn down the odd one. Audi, excuse me, <laughs> to come back in now and try and start this fight. Bon has nothing, he's got no real flank potential. Levi just jumps back on top of his face and it's a double kill here for the side of Slater. Gam are just pulling R7 apart, back into the fight, triple kill for Slater. The thing is though, Gam haven't set up in the same manner as they had before, where like Pallet having a flank, he's kind of playing frontline right now, misses the knockup as well. Here we go, they're gonna go in, Smite confirms, that's the Hex Soul, there's the double knockback and immediately Audi is dead. They're gonna try to get in with a flash back to Storm. Ooh, that was good damage though, coming in from Bon, but it's just too little, too late. Triple kill comes in here for Levi, and there's going to be a full house. Trips on dubs, double into triple, and the ace and Gam keeping themselves alive in the world's 2023 playing stage as they look to try and redeem themselves here in the losers bracket. Audi will try and pad the KDA, but not even Gam will give them that. Brilliant. Let's take a moment to uh, take a look at the post game breakdown, and then I want to focus in on Slater specifically. He was a player that we were, let's say, critical of coming into the day. Uh, the point and click CC into the follow up stun is going to be so much damage for Levi and Katy. That's the thing as well, because for Gam. I mean, still, Kiai is getting good trades with that Sheen proc. Now, as they go in, Bong needs to be careful. Wants to try and get the knockback. Oh, here we go. He uses ultimate there to try and maybe move away. He's getting some decent movement from it. Levi, no flash kick there, gets him underneath the tower. The last shot shall kill him off. And finally, R7 are rewarded for their efforts. They get themselves first blood. Again, you're going to see Odie using the taxi known as the Rift Herald. Bomb goes all out. Flash by Levi as he gets himself over the wall. Kiaia jumps in, and you can see Audi jumping back out. You do have a flash available for Kiaia, so he's just going to try and be a nuisance for the moment. They jump in, but the knockback is good. There's the Magnus Storm to come out, and finally Kiaia gets himself out. Kati finally joining in onto the fray. It is all over the place. 
place as Kiaya picks up a double. Now you can see them trying to look for this one. Seo and Miru trying to just kite this one out as best they can, but the shattering strike shatters Seo's dreams of being the carry, and its unleashed power is almost coming back up as well. They might be able to try and go for this one one more time, and they should be able to confirm the kill here onto Miru. He had no flash, he had no way out, does end up getting taken out, and it's ended up being a 5v4 now. Everyone's in this bot side, Slater feeling confident, pops the ghost, gets charmed immediately, and into a secondary charm means he has no way of saving himself. Cleansed by Seo, keeps him alive for the moment. Pallet gets the hex flash forward. The Lions just moving around, putting Pallet away from the fight. The unstoppable comes in, they jump in onto Minoru, and they're trying to burst him down. Knock up there and charm onto the two carries. An all out comes out, but Minoru is already dead. It's going to be the mid laners. Not quite traded just yet because the Vi comes in to save the day. That's cleansed in as Kiaya gets shut down. But look at Slater and the rest of Gam pushing in, pushing forward. Seo quite literally playing on the edge of his health bar. Lion says, Go on, whatever, but you need to survive. But Slater is his name and he slays him. Him down. Yeah, Flank's coming in. They know that Pink Ward is there. The charm doesn't land. And now they're going to get another scout of the week. Katy has been insane with these CC chains. And now they can really look for the fight. The all out comes out as Bong looks to jump on the Katy. Double stopwatch is used. And then they can really re engage. Seo just has nowhere to go, nowhere to be. What can he do? Kiaya now says, no <laughs> way are you getting in the back door here. You do not have to go home, mate, but you can stay here. That is the most bouncer. We keep seeing R7 going for these front-to-back fights, which is perfect for Syndra. Although this one, a bit more spread out. Oh, they're going to look to try and fully engage. There's going to flash in, scatter the weak. Slater there to try and take everybody else out. And they're all being pinched in. Everyone being jumped around on top of this one here. The feathers fly. And, that, and while that's all been happening there, just jumping onto Bong, who does go all out and tries to turn this one around. He is a Cassante, and he will be able to get one kill. But I mean, it's a consolation prize at the best. Much bigger than you. And you're just like, all right, I'm going to be the bigger man. But they got to go for a long last fight. But immediately, Bong gets CC'd up, and there's nothing he can do. Kati goes go. Golden with the stopwatch. Double kill comes in here for Slater. Maybe he wants a little bit more. They're going to try and get Seo on this backside, trying to do as best he possibly can. There's Levi moving forward. It's a triple kill here for Slater. It's a quadra kill for Slater. Penta kill for Slater. He gets himself right back on the map, and it's a league of pentakills here in the play -ins. The Death said they wanted to see more from Slater. They wanted to see Slater step up. They wanted to see Gam step up. And with a 2-0 win and a pentakill to boot, the VCS will guarantee themselves one more opportunity at qualifying to the main stage. But it didn't matter because he was just so aggressive, so far accelerated, that by the time he was even taken out of the fight, the rest of the team were going, cool, we're, we're super fed as well. Blocking Melkai take... Ultimates, getting the door in the way to make sure that if Alistair goes for a combo, he's blocking things like the Syndra ult or the follow-up CC from Syndra. That's the big thing. Oh, where Aatrox starts to slip behind, they try and go for early uh, Ninja Tabi. Oh, they're looking for an engage here. Flash in, pulverize down but the flash away is a little bit too late. The twisted advance is good. Crowny finds himself on the backside of a first blood. sheo has got nothing to offer here because they've got no damage once the carry's dead. Yeah. They're not going to look to do it because Crowny's not putting in the DPS just yet. They will have vision of this. Harp going to look to try and maybe engage on top of this one here. They're going to get a nice little bit of vision. Three-man knock-up as well is huge, but Labrov puts himself between everybody and the crop creeping CC. They're going to be able to take down Harp. Crowny has to go straight away into the feathers flying, and they're going to take down the Unipon Kaisa as well. Good kite back there from BDS. And then we'll try and turn off the back of this. It's the same as the last Rift Herald fight. There is the Maokai ultimate. Does land on a couple of people. The TP comes in. The Glacial Fisher to try and disengage from it. Crowny putting in serious work and Dead Steel going down. Now Nuke comes in from the flank. They jump on a Unipon. Appleman just kind of trying to stand forward and it's doing work on the front lines, but not quite enough to be able to take anyone down. They lose their jungler. They lose their top laner and BDS. They're happy to go back onto the Baron. They could look to end the game. You need to be careful though. Still four versus five. No ultimates really available here for DFM and BDS got it all. Appleman looking to try and caps on top of them here. Looking to see if he can go for it, but he's a bit isolated. No one's really helping him out. Appleman goes down because the rest of his team couldn't move forward. Utapon has only half his HP. Flash forward from Labrov to get down a little bit of a, a marker. Nothing else more. Harp has to use his ultimate. Almost goes down as well. They are trying to just continue to escort. No one can move on to Crowny. Crowny can just keep auto attacking. No, he can ignore the Maokai and look to end the game. BDS took it slow. They took it steady. They were the tortoise. But are they going to be maybe taking a little bit too much TP coming back in from Adam? Now you can see Labrov with the Unbreakable keeping him alive. Harp goes down. Crowny still fearless in the fight. Takes down his opposite marker as Unipon goes. And the triple kill from Noob means that BDS will go 1 0 up in the series.
shaky start for BDS, but when it got to 7 to Okay, so listen, let's zoom out for a second. And I know we have had a slightly more critical, slightly more um, negative tone here. I want to give kudos to BDS. They played clean, they played safe, they didn't really make any mistakes. Jax, I do want to can generally do okay in the wave clear, but as, as the game goes on, Jax would just completely ignore the poppy and just take towers like it's no tomorrow. But it does mean for BDS, the Cassiopeia's in a bit of a weird spot. Cassiopeia generally likes teams to play into her. Hooked in, but yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if you want this fight right now. The Ignite goes in, trade it back as well. Harp not using his flash just yet. The Ghost comes out. Utapon thinking about maybe going aggressive onto this one, and he is going for that one there. One or two more auto attacks should be enough, and Utapon gets the first blood. Back to basics here for Adam, as we can see, Nuke. Having a much better time with this one here, but now the double knockback, the flash, the auto, the shield! <laughs> oh, steal! Into Nuke, who's been consistently able to manage these Qs, and now Shale will find steel. Yeah, they're gonna find themselves now in this one here, but there's a Blitzcrank on there, so we're gonna jump in, getting the knock off and the kill down. Nuke gets Nuke down now. They can maybe look to try and get the Tristana off this one. Harp has nowhere to really go. A flash forward from Shale. You see that the Daisy was used as a little bit of a kind of a shield, a flash away there, but. Appleman just get grounded a little bit. He's going to use Adam as a little bit of a taxi out, but I don't think he's got any way out at all. Adam finally gets a kill here on his opposite number, and now Cheo goes straight on to steal, but it's going to be difficult to finish off this kill. And say that double kill for Adam. I'm trying to find somebody to catch out. He's sitting there on a little bit of a ward, trying to make sure he knows no one's going to be able to catch him out. They're not going to be able to get everybody out of this one here. The Blitzcrank goes down next. Labrov just biding his time. There's no tower for Arya. He's in no man's land. And he knows that he's going to maybe try and push towards this tower to maybe get a little bit of damage, but it's going to be all for naught because right now he is between a rock and a hard place. And imagine the way they are. It's going to be great. And Grammy I mean, Observer gets hooked, gets into the feathers and flashes away. Aria was there available. All oh, the roots come down. Crowny goes down, but oh, he takes two. two with him in a 2v1. Crowny stands tall, and the rest of his team know they can go full tilt. Back. This is your Hail Mary. This is your last moment, DFM. Your world championship relies on this. That's a good pick. Now it's a 4v5. Adam and Appleman now here. He jumps in on top of Nuke, gets the knockup, but they can't move forward just yet. They know the petrifying gaze is something so, so dangerous to move forward in. There's the redemption to try and keep him in. Big hook. Big kill! Shot down! Now, DFM, you can you get any more? They're gonna look for the hop forward. Arya Mutar, flash by Adam! Shuts down everything! Double kill! Unipon trying to kite back as best he can! A great hook there, puts Shio underneath the tower. He flashes away. It's a 3v3, but you still favor BDS. Harp, who can get the hook on? Yo, Lavrov looking for the quickness. He does get silent straight away. They're not gonna be able to stop Adam from moving in on top of Appleman. And the Blitzcrank is dead. Turn to scrap. Adam moves forward, gets bonked back, but it's a double kill for Crowny. He wants to join the 80 carries that have picked up the Pentakill today. Triple kill for Crowny as he looks for a little bit more. We'll have the fruit to try and keep him going this one. Aria moving forward, trying to do something here. Unipon, quadra kill for Crowny, and they'll give it to him! Penta kill for Crowny! And BDS will stay alive in the world's playing! Oh, in just a matter of days. We are getting Spoiled right now by the AD carry performances as everyone gets a pentakill, you get a pentakill, you get one, but BDS. A monumental gold league growth. First 10 or so minutes, pretty slow, pretty steady, and then it's BDS just flying away. Ultimately, today, BDS played very uncomplicated, clean League of Legends and got the win.